Well, it's spooky season and TV networks and streamers alike are trotting out their scary stuff. Let's talk TV. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to TV News and Reviews for the week. Uh, no news, actually, this week because we just did an episode of this uh, four or five days ago, um, and we'll do another one in a few days. But this is sort of a, a special, spooky Halloween 2021 episode of TV News and Reviews, trotting out seven new shows uh, of the spooky and or thriller and or mystery kind of uh, variation for the season. And uh, we have several big names uh, here as well from movies and books. Um, so Chucky uh, from, of course, the Child's Play series. I know what you did last summer. One of Us is Lying based on a uh, best-selling mystery book, Day of the Dead. And then a few things for the kiddos as well. On Disney Plus, you've got Just Beyond and The Ghost and Molly McGee. And then over on Netflix, Scaredy Cats. So a few shows for the PG set as well. But first, let's dive into the heavy hitters. Chucky is uh, actually a combo of uh, USA and sci-fi. Um, and you can see new episodes on both of those channels. I watched the premiere of this on sci-fi's streaming app. Um, but I think, is Peacock maybe the, the streaming home of USA? Now I can't remember. They're, they're all so, you know, interchangeable. Um, but either way, on the sci-fi uh, streaming app, you can get free episodes of this as well uh, a few days after they air. But uh, this is, of course, the latest in the Child's Play lineage, but it is a direct sequel to the seventh movie uh, called The uh, Cult of Chucky. Um, and I really, I have not seen any except for the first one, you know, way back when. And then I saw the one they did a few years ago with Mark Hamill. So, uh, this sort of disregards that whole thing from a couple of years ago. This is direct lineage from the original series. In fact, so much so that, uh, Brad Dorif is back as the voice of Chucky. He's been doing it since the late eighties with the very first child's play film. So you've really got the stamp of approval here. Um, and then the main kid, Jake Wheeler, uh, is played by Zachary Arthur, who I'm not too familiar with. Um, but I do recognize, uh, his father and uncle. They play sort of, uh, it's the same role. Devin Sawa plays both. And of course he's no stranger to, uh, some, some cult horror stuff as well. He was in, I think it was idle hands in, uh, maybe 2000 or something like that. And then uh, this person was not in the premiere episode, but she's listed as a recurring character. Jennifer Tilly uh, is back, of course, as uh, Chucky's, you know, lover, wife, whatever, Tiffany Valentine. Um, so she'll be in at least one or two subsequent episodes, I guess. Um, so this is is a lot of fun. Um, and I'm glad I, you know, I started with this one because it's the highest profile of the week, but spoiler alert for the rest of my reviews, and there's some good shows in the mix, but uh, I think this is the best one of all of them. This is a lot of fun. And again, I'm not a huge, you know, child's play devotee. Um, I saw the original movie about six years ago, maybe. And then I saw the remake uh, a couple years ago when that came out. And that's it. You know, uh, I haven't seen any of the ones in between. I haven't seen any of the, I think there was another spinoff maybe at some point too. But um, but either way, this is uh, one of those series that knows how to have fun with the horror. There can be genuine chills and, you know, genuine sort of murders and scary stuff. But uh, everybody is having a good time while they're watching it, typically. Um, and a lot of horror genres or horror horror franchises i should say doesn't necessarily get that balance right they either lean too far into the comedy and it becomes a pure camp sort of thing or um you know they go the other way and there's you know no no mirth at all it's just you know, nasty murders, and that can be fun, too, on its own, you know, um, a horror movie certainly doesn't have to have a comedic element, but, um, but if you do want to have a comedic element, there's a, there's a very delicate balance, um, and Chucky finds it very, very well, um, the, the child actors are pretty solid here, um, you know, this, this lead, like I said, um, Zachary Arthur, and then the, the kids that play his buddies, they're all pretty good too. And then Devin, Devin Sawa playing 
both the dad and the uncle. Um, you know, it's an interesting element, uh, and I'm not going to give spoilers for the first episode, but um, but he, he does a pretty good job uh, as being a complete jerk of a father. Um, his his son Jacob does happen to be gay. That's sort of the, the 2021, you know, lean into it. Okay, fine. Um, so this kid is gay, but he's, you know, being kind of bullied at school about it. He's being bullied at home about it. Um, and so he, he takes solace in this doll and that's sort of, um, I think a lot of how a lot of the Chucky movies <laughs> sort of get started, but, uh, but he's also an artist and his original vision is to sort of take the doll apart and use it for an art project. And, uh, as you can imagine, that may not go the way he intends. Um, this series is a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think as we go through the, the different episodes, um, you know, is it going to, be more of the same and we're going to get the same sort of you know killings every time and themes and maybe i don't know um you know there's there's not a ton of different places to go with the 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 killer doll sort of conceit i think chucky throughout you know seven plus movies has already sort of exhausted a lot of those possibilities but i have faith uh, that the writers in their tongue in cheek mode can uh, can bring you know, some, some cleverness to this as a series, um, and, and maybe explore some of these characters a little bit more, the human characters that we didn't get to throughout all the movies. And there is an exact thread, um, because this kid does get a phone call from one of the original owners of Chucky, and I'm not positive, to be honest, if it's from, like, the first movie or Child's Play 2 or whatever, but it's clearly, um, an homage to that very first or second movie probably the first i guess that would make the most sense um so it's it's a definite through line i think this is something that uh, fans of the franchise will be thrilled with and i think you know very casual fans such as myself i think we'll, we'll have a lot of fun with it too chucky's always been a fun character um so yeah this for me is is the best uh, of the horror shows that we're going to talk about this week it gets an a minus from me um, I should toss in before we go to our next show, uh, which is I Know What You Did Last Summer, that uh, I did review a horror show last week as well called Midnight Mass. So we're not going to go over that one this week in the horror 2021 wrap up. Um, but I gave that, um, I believe, a B plus. Um, that was a pretty good show. It's a mini series, um, so it's not going to have a second season most likely. But um, but it's it's interesting and and definitely on the horror that's like a supernatural type horror so if you missed my tv reviews last week midnight mass was uh part of that and certainly is a new horror show for 2021 as well so let's move into another of the uh movie reboots and this is actually from originally from a book and then they made a movie about a book the book was in the 70s and that's i know what you did last summer this is on amazon prime um the book was back in 1973 by lois duncan and then of course there were two movies um sort of based on that and uh here we have pretty much the the same concept i mean it's uh, it takes place in the present day, so there's, you know, a lot of social media sort of related stuff, um, but the conceit is still the same, um, you know, a group of kids murder somebody, uh, in this particular instance, though, they murder uh, somebody from their their class, and then next year they have to uh, sort of face the consequences with the writing on the mirror and all the classic stuff from the movie. So, this show suffers from a few things. Um, number one, which I think is probably the most obvious uh, from just watching the first couple episodes, the uh, cast does not live up to the movie cast at all. The, the chemistry just isn't there. The movie, of course, featured uh, you know some some pretty hot teen actors of the time, Sarah Michelle Gellar and Freddie Prince Jr. But the show now these are all unknowns, but that can be okay. I mean, I didn't really know any of the kids in Chucky, um, and, and that worked out just fine. But these guys, you know, the chemistry isn't quite there with them. Um, actually, I should say three problems. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that this does not need to be dragged out into series style because <laughs> two and three sort of dovetail uh, as, as issues because number three is that the characters 
are not very likable. You know, they're, they're covering up their own murder here. They're only looking out for themselves. They're just sort of a-holes to begin with. And so as we dive deeper into their stories, it, it doesn't uh, endear them. You know, at least it didn't for me. So um, the more we find out about these characters, which is, you know, we will find out a lot because it's just a whole series, not just a two hour movie, um, the, the less likable they sort of become um, and sort of every man for themselves. And let's cover up all our tracks and uh, nobody cared about this person anyway. So the first episode, really, there isn't a ton of scares. Um, because they're, they're just sort of building the momentum. Yes, we see a sign on the mirror with the lipstick, and I know what you did last summer. Okay. Um, and then the second episode sort of, you know, ramps up a little bit, I assume, as we go along. Um, we'll, we'll get more and more into the horror of it. But, yeah, th this one didn't work for me on several levels. Um, and I just, I don't think there's enough there to give us an entire show about the movies were were just fine. I never saw the second one. I'm not even sure if I saw all of the first one, but um, I I know the basics, you know, with the, with the fisherman and all that. But um, I definitely never saw the second one. But I I just don't think uh, this needed to be stretched out, and that's sort of the problem right now with with you know peak TV and all of the the streamers and oh we got to get this eight episode series, ten episode series. Sometimes it, they just don't deserve it. You know, and this is a prime example of that. I know what you did last summer gets a D plus from me. So up next, one of us is lying. This is on Peacock. Now this is the probably least horrory of them all, but it does surround a murder mystery, and so there are a few elements here that uh, sort of match up with the spooky season for sure. Now I will preface this by saying, so this is based on a book as well. Um, and the book uh, was by Karen M. McManus. And it actually is not that old. It's from 2017. Uh, but believe it or not, I actually read part of this book. I read maybe like three books a year. I don't read a lot um, just because I don't have the time. So, um, but I, I like reading. And so my nephew and his buddy uh, were talking about this this book for a school assignment. And it is a young adult book. You know, it, it's made pretty much for teenagers. Um, but it sounded intriguing. I love a good murder mystery. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to check this book out. Um, you know, and even before I found out they were making a show out of it. So I never actually did finish the book. I will say that I got maybe, I don't know, 70 pages in and it was certainly intriguing, but I just, you know, time escaped me and I never finished it. Um, so it's interesting because usually I don't, I'm not able to compare the book to the movie or the show, and here I can. So um, Peacock has, has, again, like I Know What You Did Last Summer, collected a, a bunch of teenage kids that uh, I don't recognize. Um, you know, I, I could say their names, but I think they would be meaningless. Um, I don't really recognize uh, anybody in this show, even the adults. Um, but essentially, um, there's a, a murder in detention after the uh, teacher steps out, this this kid who had started an app telling gossip about kids around the school. So obviously, many people had motive, you know, to to murder him. Um, but the teacher steps out. This kid gets a drink and ends up dying of a peanut allergy. And so, you know, how did that happen? Who's responsible? And of course, the cops and the teachers alike are pointing to the students because they were all the ones there when it happened. Um, and so that's sort of the premise of it. And this is a book series because I know, I think there's the next one in the series was called One of Us is Next. So if this gets a season two, I would imagine they would maybe tackle that book. But what's interesting here is instead of doing what I know what you did last summer did and just stretched out a thin premise uh, over, you know, eight episodes or whatever, these guys actually took the book and sort of sped up the murder and you know th like the stuff i read in the book those first 70 whatever pages was almost all in that first episode and so they've really expanded the universe a little bit of these kids and uh, made some appropriate changes to drag the story out in interesting ways this is a very interesting show i watched uh, the first two episodes i think five of them are up right now but it is a weekly show um, it just happened to premiere, you know, a couple of weeks ago and I hadn't gotten to it yet, but I think it premiered with the first three episodes and then one a week after that. Um, so I was intrigued enough 
to want to watch more of this. I would say other than Chucky, uh, it's the only one of the week that I really wanted to sink my teeth into and watch more of. Um, and unlike I Know What You Did Last Summer, I think the actors here are believable as classmates, as buddies. I'm not sure that their acting is superb. I mean, they're okay, but the script is good enough um, and the mystery is interesting enough that you can sort of put that aside for a little bit that maybe they're not, you know, Academy Award winning actors here. Um, but I think they do a good enough job and you do have sort of your, it's funny that they're all in detention because you do have sort of your, um, your basic archetypes a la The Breakfast Club. But I think that was the point because actually in the book, they're in Saturday detention. In the show, they changed it to just after school. But in the book, they are at Saturday detention. So I think that was kind of a wink and a nod purposefully, um, which I, I sort of liked. Um, so yeah, I, I like this show. Um, I, I If you are a reader, I would recommend the book if you don't mind something that's probably made for 15 or 16 year old reading wise. Um, but it, it was a, a pretty good read from what I read, and the show is interesting as well. So I'm going to leave one of us as lying with a B+. Plus. Up next, we're going to go back to sci-fi. Actually, they have another new show based on a movie. This is Day of the Dead now. And, of course, this is based on the uh, Romero classic. Um, and I don't know if he's still alive, but he didn't really have anything to do with this. But uh, as is, you know, a lot of those Blank of the Dead movies, uh, six strangers are trying to survive some, uh, you know, zombie apocalypse here. And in this particular case, they're looking at the first 24 hours of uh, the, the zombie apocalypse. And by the end of the first episode, the zombies have started you know, coming up from the grave and roaming around. So we get to know the characters a little bit in that time frame uh, before that. And again, nobody uh, I really recognize here at all. Um, the main sort of character, I guess, is this high school senior, um, Cam McDermott, who uh, is is played by Keenan Tracy. And uh, he is the son of a local police off, uh, police detective, I should say. Um, and it takes place in Pennsylvania. So that's always fun. Um, but this is like a classic sci-fi channel show. Like the acting is pretty bad. Um, and you know, the, the script is a bit subpar and a bit corny in spots. Um, but look, I didn't hate this show, but I think the whole conceit is just about a decade late. I mean, zombie shows and movies are so like over by now. Um, the only thing I can even think of movie-wise in the last few years was Zombieland 2. Um, and that was kind of fun because, you know, it was a sequel of a very beloved movie from a decade earlier when zombies were pretty hot. But, you know, The Walking Dead still is doing all these spinoffs and, and stuff. But, you know, does anybody still watch The Walking Dead anymore? I mean, it's so, you know, old hat by now and um, everybody's kind of over it. And the, the whole zombie thing is just passe. So, you know, what do you do even that's interesting with it? And this show didn't do much of anything interesting. Um, I mean, yeah, some of the characters are okay. Um, again, the acting maybe isn't great, but the characters themselves, I, I, I can I can get behind some of them. Um, you know, one works at a mortuary, so that's kind of an interesting plot line. You know, her boss is kind of hitting on her, and then he's one of the first ones to get murdered by the zombies. So, like, all right, we, you know, rah-rah on that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that doesn't add anything new to the genre, um, at all. And, and it's a tired genre anyway. Um, so, you know, look, there was only one episode of this, um, when I watched, I think there might still be only one up or maybe the second one premiered last night or something, but either way, I only watched the, the pilot cause that's all that was up on the, the sci-fi app, but it didn't wow me. It was completely fine. Uh, and if you are a zombie fan, you know, I, I think you could maybe enjoy it, but I don't think it brings anything new to the table. Um, and, and in sci-fi tradition, the acting, mm, a, a little bit bad. Um, so I'm going to leave Day of the Dead with a C-. minus. All right, so now we get to three shows for the kiddos. These are for the, the PG set, but uh, a little bit of, you know, sort of, intro to spook beginner spooky kind of stuff um you know i actually we have halloween kills at my movie theater right now and i i am aghast at the number of you know 
five, six, seven year olds that uh, are going into this crazy, like very hard R movie with a lot of killings. Um, I think this is the kind of stuff that kids of that age should be watching, uh, you know, if they're going to go for horror. Um, I, I think all of these are probably, in terms of fear, I would say all of them are below, like, the Goosebumps movies, for example. Um, but it, it's, you know, that's an apt um, comparison because the first one is based on some R.L. Stein works. Just Beyond is uh, the name of it. It's on Disney Plus right now, and I believe all eight episodes are available now. This is uh, an anthology series based on these different novels from R.L. Stein. And this R.L. Stein man, he is, I think it's a he, um, is, is just lighting up the small and big screen once again. You know, we had the, the Goosebumps resurgence a few years ago with Jack Black, but Fear Street is a series on Netflix uh, of three films that I'm actually going to hopefully review sometime before Halloween. Um, and and he wrote the books for that. And now he's writing the books uh, or he wrote the books for Just Beyond. So, you know, he, he's always, uh, you know, getting his name out there. And I just love that because uh, I love his stuff because it's perfect for that age group. I would say this show is probably good for eight through, you know, 12 probably. I think would be uh, would be good with this. Um, but it, yeah, it's a nice intro. And yeah, like I said, it's uh, an anthology series. So each episode is completely different. But uh, there's a lot of, you know, pretty big names in here. I wouldn't say these are maybe, you know, the cream of the crop A-listers, but um, you've got, you know, some, some SNL alums. You've got Henry Thomas, who played the kid in E.T. Um, you know, so... There's definitely a few people you might recognize here in these. And um, yeah, e each one is a standalone story. And they're they're all sort of in that Twilight Zone type of feel. Like, I, I'm not sure if any of them are, you know, like straight horror. Like, one of them was kind of a Stepford Wives type thing, but for, um, you know, people at a girls' school. You know, this girl, and in fact, I think this was the first episode. Um, this girl played by McKenna Grace was like this punk rocker. And, oh, she loves her Green Day. And, she, you know, it's about as punky you can get on Disney Plus, I guess. But um, <laughs> but she gets shipped off to this uh, prep school. And she learns, you know, there's more than, than quite meets the eye with the teachers here and all of that. You know, it, it's that kind of a, a flavor for these episodes. Um, and then the second episode, parents are from Mars, kids are from Venus. Um, you know, that's about some alien parents. Um, so it, it's that type of thing, but they have some fun with it. It's not all super, super crazy scary. It's in that sort of goosebumps vein. So it makes total sense. R.L. Stein's, uh, you know, name is all over this. Um, and, you know, look, because uh, these are one-off episodes and actors it is hard to say like oh well the acting's you know here or there because it's all different people but with any anthology series i watched uh the first three episodes because you really do need a good sampling i think of an anthology series um and all of these episodes i, I think were pretty solid so um one of my younger nephews is 10 now and like this is right i think in the wheelhouse of of what you know, a 10-year-old kid should be watching in terms of horror, sort of making it the entree in. Um, and, and and I rather enjoyed this. I, I don't think they're reinventing the wheel, but it is sort of a, a Twilight Zone-esque, Outer Limits-esque for the new set. Um, so I leave beyond, or just beyond rather, with a B. Um, and then also on Disney+, Plus, this is actually airing first on Disney Channel, and then it goes on Disney+, Plus. Uh, I guess a day or two later, but this is a cartoon show called The Ghost and Molly McGee. Um, and this is probably for even younger kids. I would say, you know, I mean, I don't know. I was two probably when I was watching Scooby-Doo. I'm not sure if it's, you know, quite for two-year-olds, but um, I would say anybody six and up maybe could watch this. This is uh, basically a, a spooky comedy show. Um, it's, you know, a cartoon and... Some of the voices here you'll you'll really recognize. Uh, Jordan Klepper from The uh, Daily Show is one of the main uh, people, but 
a lot of the recurring people or the one-time guest stars, you know, include uh, Patton Oswalt, Greta Gerwig, Kelsey Grammer, Jane Lynch, um, Darcy Carden from The Good Place, Yvette Nicole Brown. Um, so a lot of people that we've, you know, seen and heard before. Um, but this gal, Molly McGee, uh, who is, I don't know, probably in middle school, I guess, um, voiced by Ashley Birch. Um, she is like 11 or 12 and she is, uh, you know, a little bit of a macabre girl, not quite Wednesday Adams, but, um, she learns that there is a ghost in their attic of this rundown new house. And she just is so into this idea. She's like, oh yes, a ghost, let's be friends. Da, 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 da. The ghost tries to curse her, ends up cursing himself to basically be doomed to spend eternity with her and her family. Um, and so that leads us into some silly situations. Um, but there is a little bit of a spook factor here. You know, I think there's some imagery that could certainly be um, hard for somebody, you know, maybe four or five years old to deal with. Um, but, you know, for the most part, it's a comedy show. Um, just with that spooky and, and sort of, uh, supernatural lean to it. Um, but the scripts here are good. This is a show that, uh, I think parents would not be embarrassed to watch with their kids. You know, I don't think it's one of these things where the jokes are so bad or the acting is so bad. No, everything here is, is pretty much on track, um, for good family entertainment in the realm of the spooky, um, Again, it's more funny than scary, of course, but I figure, look, you know, it's about a ghost. Let's throw it in to the 2021, uh, you know, horror recap. Uh, I, I like this show a lot. Ghost and Molly McGee gets a B plus from me. And then finally, over on Netflix, we have Scaredy Cats. I was trying to do all seven of these in under a half hour, and I think I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> so, so this is over on Netflix, which means all the episodes are up right now. And this is probably for that same set age-wise, maybe six through 10, I think, would probably get the most out of this. Um, I think girls specifically, um, and I don't usually say that if there's a show with all girls, I don't say, oh, well, I think, you know, girls would like this more than boys, but uh, it, it's pretty, it's pretty like female specific, estrogen specific. Um, I, I can't imagine my nephews enjoying this show, to be completely honest, but, you know, um, so this show is in the Disney Channel vein of bad acting, silly scripts. There's no laugh track here because it is, uh, less of a comedy. Certainly, you know, Ghost of Molly McGee is much more of a comedy than this. Um, but, you know, there's a few jokes in here, including this dad who is your classic, like, idiot father. He's a single dad because the mom passed away. And we learned that this amulet she had that has magical powers was sort of, um, you know, passed down through the generations and the dad didn't know it, but it's got magic. And when he gives it to his daughter, she learns of the magic. And then these couple of witches are trying to get a hold of it, um, you know, with, with their little henchmen. Um, but at the core of it is these, these three girls who are probably also in middle school, about Molly McGee's age, I guess, from that show, probably 11 or 12 years old, maybe even younger. Um, yeah, probably more like nine or 10, maybe. Um, but they're, uh, bad actors <laughs> and, um, nothing about this really works. You know, I, I do think seven or eight year old girls are going to love it, you know? So there is something to be said for speaking to your target audience. Um, but this is one that the parents I think are going to just, it's going to be nails on a chalkboard to them trying to watch this. But yeah, the thing I was saying with the dad, it's just this classic, like, idiot father, you know, and not just like, oh, he tells dad jokes. No, this, this one is just first class moron. Um, and I can get behind, you know, a, a silly parent or, or even a stupid parent. Um, but I mean, they, they take this to ridiculous places and it's for comedy purposes, but this isn't really a comedy show. Like I would think if it had a laugh track, if it was one of those sort of Disney channel looking shows, but it's really not, you know, it's sort of, it is kind of a Halloween-y type show, um, but there's these weird comedic elements to it, and, and I just, I feel like it would be more at home on Disney Channel with a laugh track, and then it would be like a sitcom 
with a spooky lean as opposed to what it is, which is this kind of horror show for, for little girls. Um, but with this, you know, hokey jokey dad. Um, so yeah, this is one to skip, but I, I will say for its, again, for its target audience, I, I think little girls are going to love this. I think they'll think it's funny and I think it'll be a nice foray for them into future spooky movies. Um, but I would sit them down first and show them, say the witches or something from 1990, uh, from the Royal Doll book. As opposed to something like this, where it's just so corny, you know, it's sort of hard to get behind it. So I leave Scaredy Cats with a D plus. So a few good ones to check out, a few, you know, in the rotten column, and then one sort of <laughs> right in the middle, I think, um, which was Day of the Dead. But uh, overall, you know, a, a bit of a hit or miss Halloween. Uh, I will have my Fear Street reviews, speaking of the R.L. Stein uh, books. Uh, I watched those movies on Netflix. I will have that review up for you, hopefully within the next week or so, because Halloween is really right around the corner. Um, so yeah, I wanted to knock out these spooky reviews. Uh, I will have a full TV news and reviews with some TV news uh, in about four or five more days. Uh, trying to sort of get back on track, but we're going to review Home Sweet Home from NBC. The new show Queens on ABC just premiered, so we'll talk about that. And of course, uh, many other ones. Dope Sick with Michael Keaton on Hulu. Got to get to that eventually. Um, so thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.